let me know if you have any technical issues at that email address. And thank you, Anna. And I again apologize for the delay. You're muted, Anna. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. I put a link in the chat. So that will take you to the slides, which I am also going to share on. Um, oh boy. Okay, here we go. Hopefully, y'all can see my slides. All right, so I've got a lot of information in here that hopefully will be helpful to y'all who may be publishing and or considering publishing work soon and looking for possible open access opportunities to share your work. So this is me. I'm Anna Kraft. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the coordinator of scholarly communications here in the UNCG University Libraries. And Budget cuts have definitely impacted our campus, and that includes our open access publishing support, but we still have some great opportunities to help anybody here, faculty, students, staff, and others, publish their work through open access, either at no cost or at discounted rates. And that's what we're gonna talk about. So in this slide deck, we'll talk about some publisher deals that we have. We'll talk about the open access publishing fund and how that can be used. I would be glad to answer any questions that y'all have, and I'll talk about where to go for more information after the fact. There are a lot of things that we aren't going to be able to cover today that I also like talking about. All of the things that you see on this uh, slide are things that I can help with and that others in the library can help with as well. So if you're interested in open access, publishing basics for you or your grad students, choosing journals, citation tracking, metrics, predatory journals, all of these things. We have done sessions on them, so there's slides and recordings here, but if these are topics that you or your courses are interested in, please reach out. We would be glad to do a session or um, talk more about these things. And I know it's the beginning of the semester, so we've all had a lot of information thrown at us and a lot's going on, and it's tough to remember everything. But if you can only remember one thing from today, if you've got questions about open access publication funding, please reach out to me. And also your library liaison is a great place to start with any questions related to the library. And uh, if you're not sure if, if, that per if the liaison is the person who will handle it, that's fine. Like start with them and they can direct you. And the liaisons are linked here on this slide. All right, so let's dive into the open access publisher deals that we have. These are the publishers that we're working with right now, and we'll talk about each of them in more detail on the following slides. So ACS, the American Chemical Society, is the first one. We have a limited number of APC vouchers with them, and these vouchers cover the full cost of publishing open access articles with ACS. These are available to anybody at UNCG who has a uncg.edu email address, although you have to be the corresponding author of the manuscript in order to use one of these vouchers. As you might guess, chemistry and related fields are the area that they concentrate in, and all of their journals are eligible. This includes gold and hybrid open access journals. Gold open access is when the full journal, everything in it is published through open access. And hybrid is when it is a mostly closed journal, so the, it's not open access by default, but you can elect as an author to choose to pay an APC, an article processing charge, uh, in order to make your article open. So hybrid, some of the content's going to be open by author choice. Gold, everything is going to be open. A little more info. So we have a limited number of vouchers with ACS. Right now, we still have vouchers with them uh, for 2023, and at the current rate we've been using them, we probably will still have them through the end of this year. Although if we suddenly get a bunch of requests, we might use them up before the end of the year. Starting in 2024, we will have a renewed pool of these vouchers. Um, but if we do run out before the end of this year, further APCs for manuscripts that are accepted within this year will not be able to be covered through this program. Uh, but we may have open access publishing fund money available, and I'll talk more about that. And so the date 
for most of these deals, it's based around eligibility is based around the acceptance date. So you can't say, all right, well, I was accepted on December 30th, but I'm going to wait until January 1st. They're not going to let you do that. Um, so the acceptance date is important in terms of if there is uh, a voucher available. A little more info from them. Their prices for article processing charges vary about 1600 to about five grand. Uh, but no matter what the price is of the APCs with them, with if you've got one of these vouchers, your whole APC would be covered. They do offer some other discounts to members and people at subscribing institutions, and there's more information on their website, but you wouldn't need to worry about that if you're using one of the vouchers that we've got. Our next publisher is Cambridge University Press. We have unlimited APC vouchers with them, but only through the end of 2023. Like ACS, you need to have a UNCG email address, so it's available to everybody here, but you need to be the corresponding author of the paper. They have wider subject coverage, humanities, social sciences, science, technology, medicine, and all of their online journals are eligible for this deal. That includes both gold and hybrid. But this is related to our budget cuts. We are not going to have this deal past 2023. So for folks who may have perhaps already submitted a manuscript to Cambridge and it's under review. If your article is accepted for publication on or before December 31st, you should be eligible for full APC coverage. But after that date, we will not have vouchers with Cambridge, though we should have open access publishing fund money available to help offset those costs. A little more info about Cambridge. If you're publishing with them after our deal expires, it would still be good to check with them about discounts that may be available to you based on peer review activities or society memberships that you may have. Uh, most of their APCs are somewhat lower than some of the other publishers. So they have some that are around $3,200, but they, there are others that are in like the hundreds of dollars and some actually have no APC. Uh, and for the latest on their costs, for the most up-to-date information, you would want to check their website that has a spreadsheet you can download. And this is stuff that I can help with as well if you have questions. Our next publisher is the Royal Society of Chemistry. Like Cambridge, we have a deal with them, but it's only through 2023. And this one, we have a limited number of APC vouchers. These are available to anyone with a UNCG email address. Again, you need to be the corresponding author. Like ACS, this is a chemistry focused publisher. And a, this is a little bit different, but we have specific quantities of vouchers with them that are reserved for specific types of journals. So we have some in the hybrid area, some in the gold, and I think maybe one reserved for RSC advances. If we run out of vouchers in any one of those categories and someone wants to publish in one of those categories, you would get a discount through them instead if it's before January 1st. So you'd be eligible for a 15% discount, which should be able to be combined with OAPF funds. Like Cambridge, due to budget cuts, this deal is unfortunately ending at the end of this year. And again, if your article is accepted for publication on or before the 31st of December, you should be eligible for full APC coverage if vouchers are available. Um, starting January 1st, those vouchers will go away, unfortunately. If you're publishing with them after our deal expires, you may have discounts available to you based on society membership, and they also let people know that you can request discount or waiver consideration based on your circumstances. Their site has more information about that. Uh, their journal APC costs are about $3,200 generally for the hybrid journals, lower for the gold journals. Um, but please note that if this is an area of interest for you, a number of their gold journals have waived APCs completely through, it ranges from 2024 to 2026. So their website has more information about that. Sage is another publisher we work with. We have a 10% APC discount with them. That's not a lot, uh, but it is something. So anyone with a UNCG email address is eligible for this. You need to be the corresponding author. Their subject coverage is primarily social sciences and some related fields. And this applies this discount only to their gold open access journals. 
and it can be combined with OAPF money. If you're publishing with them, though, you may have access to better discounts based on other factors, society membership, peer review work, if you're a student, if you have done commissioned work, and they have some other factors as well. So checking on their discount options may be more beneficial to you. Unfortunately, they do not allow deal stacking, so you can't combine a discount for peer review work with this 10% discount that we have. You would just want to take whatever the better discount is. Their hybrid journal APCs are about three grand. Their gold APCs are lower. And their journal individual journal homepages will tell you more by journal. Wiley is another publisher we work with. We have a limited number of APC vouchers with them, and these are actually shared through a consortial group that includes other schools in North and South Carolina. Anyone with a UNCG email address is eligible. Wiley is a primarily science-focused publisher, and their gold and hybrid journals are eligible for this. But if we run out of this pool of vouchers before the end of the year, you would instead be eligible for a 10% APC discount, which you should be able to combine with OAPF funding if it's available. In terms of voucher availability for this year, we do still have vouchers right now, but we are on track to run out before the end of 2023. Um, so we will have a renewed pool of vouchers starting on January 1st. They have told us we've been trying to check on some options to get coverage if we run out uh, before the end of the year. And they have said they will not, they're, they're not being very flexible about this right now. Um, but maybe we would be able to work something out. Um, so definitely check with us if you're publishing with Wiley and uh, this is a concern for you. What they have said is that we, if we run out before the 31st, you'd be eligible for a 10% discount. We may be able to supplement that with OAPF funding, but we're trying to find a little flexibility for additional coverage. So if you're publishing with Wiley at a point when we don't have APC waivers available, you also should check with them about a discount based on society membership. And their APC costs really vary. So their hybrid journals are all over the board from about $1,000 to $6,500. Their gold journals, the prices are a little lower. And their price lists are available on the website. IGI Global offers us a 5% discount. This really is not very much, um, but if you're publishing with them, it still can help lower the cost. This is unfortunately only available to faculty. We tried to get this coverage extended, but they said faculty only. Their subject areas are business, education, humanities, social sciences, science, technology, so it's kind of broad. All of their journals are eligible, and this discount can be combined with OAPF money. Their current prices for the APCs range from about $1,300 to $3,300. And they also publish open access books. So they have what are called book processing charges and chapter processing charges for book chapters, but those are considered separately. So those may not be eligible for this discount. Of course, it's always worth checking. MDPI is another publisher we work with. They offer 10% discounts on article processing charges and book processing charges. Anyone at UNCG is eligible. They're primarily in the sciences and technology. All of their journals are eligible as well as books. The, of all the publishers we work with though, this is the one that I would most encourage you to think critically about the quality of the publication. They do have some important and impactful journals, but they have some others that may not be as high quality. So really think about, um, if you're thinking about publishing with them, really check on the quality first. And this might be something that you would wanna talk to me about or talk to your liaison about when you're thinking about uh, if you wanna publish with them. This discount, like many of the others, can be combined with OAPF funding if applicable. Uh, their prices range from about $1,100 to $2,300 for article processing charges. If you want more information, that info is on their website. And there may be some other discounts and waivers available based on like peer review activities and other things. So it's always worth checking on that. This is just a quick recap slide of all this information, all the publishers, all the deals, but let's move forward to talking about the Open Access Publishing Fund. So I've mentioned this several times by name. This is a, a fund that we offer 
that can award you up to $1,500 to offset the cost of publishing in open access journals. If you're a full-time faculty member, a full-time EHRA employee, or an enrolled graduate student at UNCG, then you are eligible to apply and receive up to one award per year. Uh, in terms of budget, we did have some concerns at the start of the fiscal year about whether or not we would be able to move forward with offering this funding, but happily, thanks to the libraries and the Office of Research and Engagement, we do have funding for this year, um, and it, it's stable based on what we had last year. So uh, if we got, get a similar number, number of requests, we should be able to fund all of them like we did last year. But if demand grows, it is possible that we could run out of funding before the end of this fiscal year, which ends on uh, June 30th. So if that happens, we would not be able to offer funding awards, uh, further funding awards within the year. Um, are all open access journals eligible for this funding? No, there are some criteria. The articles need to be in a peer reviewed journal that's open access. They should be listed in the directory of open access journals. There are some exceptions that will not be listed there, um, but those would need to be reviewed and approved by the review committee. If you're uncertain about if a journal is eligible uh, for, to be considered for one of the, these awards, then please contact us and consider doing it in advance before you've submitted your work. You can contact me or my colleague, Christine Fisher, who runs this uh, award committee. And these eligibility requirements are in place to help avoid us funding predatory journals. And we can do whole sessions on this topic. Uh, unfortunately, there are exploitative journals out there that charge these APCs, but don't add any value, don't provide peer review, editing, other services, even though they're telling authors that they are providing those services. These journals can be really aggressive in emailing potential authors, trying to solicit submissions. And if you're concerned about if your journal is actually legitimate, please ask us. This is something that we help with regularly, and we would be really glad to help you, your colleagues, your students, consider and evaluate journals to try to avoid these predatory journals. If you want to learn more about evaluating journal quality, there's a good tool called Think, Check, Submit with a, a checklist uh, that can help you can walk through. There's a very detailed rubric available through Journal Evaluation Tool. Both of these are freely available and have linked some presentation slides and recordings that talk more about this topic. Some other things to keep in mind with the OAPF, consider applying as soon as possible if your manuscript is accepted and you want to apply to use this money. Requests are considered in the order that they're received. And if there are any changes to funding availability, we will update the web page as soon as we know. But if you want to check with us, that's also fine. You can, fine, you can contact me or Christine, and our email addresses are linked here. Okay, I've been blazing through all of this, I will pause and have a drink of water. And if there are any questions right now, um, I'm about to go into a question section, but if you have any, please ask. Uh, excuse me, I have a question. Yes, please. Um, so if uh, the, the, uh, the journal that I'm going to uh, publish my article is not uh, one of those journals that has contract, Mm -hmm. you have a voucher for them so if i apply for this funding and for example i get uh, open access funding uh for 1500 mm -hmm. and it doesn't um cover all the cost so how can i uh, compensate the rest of the cost yeah yeah that's that's a question that comes up regularly and the because some of these apcs are quite high um, we, and it, because we're trying to support a lot of different people, we have to cap it at $1,500. Some departments do make departmental funds available. Um, so I would check with your department to see if there's money available there. Um, and actually, let me go forward to, we're going to go back to some of these that I'm skipping. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about this. So if there's no deal with your publisher and the the fund won't cover your full costs. Um, 
One option is to publish in a closed journal that has no article processing charges and then share your work through an open access repository like NC Docs. Some journal, some you may be set on a, an open journal though, and that's fine. Um, in that case, if you're in a financial or geographic hardship situation, it can be worth contacting the publisher to ask if they could lower or waive your APC. The worst they can say is no. Um, and it's unlikely to get a geographic hardship waiver if you're in this country. Um, but many of them do consider requests uh, to lower APC costs. Some of them won't, um, but it's worth checking. Another thing that you can do is if you have co-authors at other institutions, check with them. There may be open access funding options that are available to them that might be able to help support joint publications. Um, and again, I would also consider checking with your department to see if there is money available there. It's tough. These APCs can be so expensive and uh, we, you know, we're, we're providing some money, but it often does not cover that full cost. So this is challenging, we realize. Um, okay, let's go back a little more and get back into some of these questions. All right, so there's no requirement that anyone has to publish with any of the journals or publishers that we've talked about today. We do have these deals and incentives with some publishers, but it's really up to you as part of academic freedom to decide what's the best venue for your work. And we wanna encourage people to do that. Another concern, concern that we've had is uh, some of the messaging around these requests or these, uh, these approvals. So here's an example from the American Chemical Society where the author received this information saying that they were approved for a voucher and the total charges covered were $4,000. And then the author contacted us and said, oh my gosh, is the library having to pay $4,000? when this is accepted? And it's, the answer is no. Um, in that situation, when we've got those vouchers with the publishers, you don't need to worry about the cost. Because of the agreements that we have, there are not additional costs to the libraries when these vouchers are used. So if you see a cost associated with it, you should think of it as this is how much it would have cost to publish openly in this journal if we did not have a deal with them. But where we have these vouchers, the cost will not impact us because it has already been covered. If your research area is not represented in these deals, um, that can be challenging too. So our current publisher deals, you've probably noticed, are weighted more heavily toward the sciences than the social sciences or humanities. And not all research areas are covered. There may not be good journal options for everybody in all of the areas. These are new types of deals. Not all publishers offer them. This is kind of a developing area in libraries and publishing. If there are publishers that you want us to look into working with, uh, please let us know. My colleague Tim Bucknell can take those requests. Not all publishers do this, so it, we can't promise that it will work out, but it's something that we can consider and check out. How do you find a good journal for your research? if you want to to offer, or if you want to publish with one of these groups that offers these waivers. So there's no master list that brings together all the available journals. If you're considering Wiley, they have a journal finder tool that will work from your title and abstract that can suggest applicable journals. And they also have some other tools that may be able to help you find a good publication. Some of the other publishers have journal lists and generally allow browsing or narrowing down by subject. And also consider your library liaison. They may, may be able to help you in identifying appropriate journals. What if we run out of vouchers with a publisher that you would like to uh, publish with? So Cambridge and RSC are ending on December 31st. Wiley, we will likely have a gap in coverage later this year before uh, our voucher pool restarts on January 1st. In these situations, um, we wish that we could provide coverage, um, but you may need to apply to the Open Access Publishing Fund if those vouchers are not available. Though, of course, 1500 is the maximum, and we've talked about that challenge with APCs, some of them being higher than that. Okay, so we covered this. Uh, so let's wrap up. Um, if you have more questions after this session, 
your liaison librarian is a great place to start. So they are your subject experts. If you're not sure who yours is, we can help you find out. Um, and they may be able to help you identify and consider potential publication venues. I'm the main contact for questions about open access and OA publishing support, though many of your liaisons also are knowledgeable in this area. And if you want to start with them, that is completely fine. Christine Fisher is one of my colleagues who leads the team that reviews applications to the Open Access Publishing Fund. She also works on the logistics of transferring that money. And my colleague, Tim Bucknell, works with the Carolina Consortium. They negotiate many of these deals with publishers. Okay, so that's a whirlwind um, introduction to our Open Access Publishing Fund and other funding deals. And then, a little acronym guide here at the end. We've got a lot of acronyms that we throw around and just information about ranges for APC costs for these publishers, which of course could change at any time. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop sharing there. Um, oops. And um, if y'all have any questions, please ask. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe it's not a good question. Uh, so would you recommend Wiley uh, Journal for publishing a paper about uh, health science and interdisciplinary uh, uh, article like health science and genetic? Would you recommend that? So I... Um, I am unfortunately not a subject specialist. Um, I'm kind of a generalist. And I so that sounds like a great question to take to your library liaison um, who who would have a little more knowledge about your area and what journals they might be good for for your exact um, topic. Okay. Um, so but yeah, that that's that's not a bad question at all. I think that's a great question. Um, and it would be a good one to kind of start that conversation with your liaison. What department are you in? CSD. Say that again. CSD. Oh, CSD. Okay. Um, Jenny, Sam, do y'all know who's the liaison? There? I think it was CSD. Leah. Yeah. It's Leah. Communication oh, Sciences oh, oh. and Disorders. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Very great. Close. Yeah. Two very closely close sounding departments. Okay, yeah, so Leah, um, Leah Leininger is the liaison in that area, um, and she would be a great place to start with thinking about uh, some possible journal options. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks for the question. Other questions? And I'm trying to think about if there's anything else to share. Um, yeah, and of course, if y'all have questions that come up later, please feel free to reach out. We are here to help with all these things. And I know um, all this, this stuff about the publishers and the different deals can get kind of confusing. So if you've got questions, please ask uh, either now or later. Glad to help. OK, so let me pull up the next webinar. Sorry. So the next webinar in the series is called Inside the Closed Stacks, Collections of Distinction and Special Collections in University Archives by Kathleen Smith and Stacey Krim. It's on Friday, September 29th. Other ones we have coming up are Ferguson and the Case of the Missing Document, Online Federal Depository by Joshua Olson and scoping reviews by Leah Leininger and Maggie Murphy um, um, in November, November 15th. So you can sign up and get access to all of the prior recordings um, on that link that Anna shared earlier. Um, I moved uh, our assessment form into OneDrive and let me shock everyone, I'm having a little hard time finding it at the moment. Um, so I will follow up in the email with the assessment form and uh, Please fill it out to let us know how this went uh, in the follow up email. You will get a link to the slides and the recording in the follow up email. So um, thank you. Any final comments or questions before we head out? And I again, I apologize that I was late.
It's all good. Thanks, Sam, for coordinating okay. this and facilitating. And thanks, y'all, for being here. We appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Okay. Are you raising your hands? Um, oh, you're just thumbs up. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, y'all, uh, take care and reach out if you've got questions. And yeah, we'll be in touch. Thanks, everyone. Bye.